Welcome to our daily readings from the Bible, reading a chapter each day from the New Testament. In Psalm 119, verse 11, we read, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. O Lord, plant your word deep in our hearts these days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, today we're reading from uh, the first letter of John, chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and the blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God, God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. If you see any brother or sister committing a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God, and the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. So this chapter contains a number of themes that we've come across recently in our readings that we've been sharing together. First of all, there's the theme of love and how love for God and love for one another can't be separated. The previous chapter ended with John writing that whoever doesn't love their brother or sister whom they've seen cannot love God whom they've not, whom they've not seen. And here he continues that theme. Everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. But then he turns over the coin and says, this is how we know we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. So we can't love God without loving his children and we love his children by loving God. It seems that the two are intertwined and inseparable. Another theme is overcoming. Back in John's Gospel, chapter 16, we read Jesus' words, In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Here, John talks some more about overcoming the world, but this time it's our faith that overcomes the world. This is because our faith is in the one who has already overcome the world. I wasn't too sure what overcoming the world meant exactly, but perhaps a part of it is restoring it to how it was originally intended to be. Think of a once beautiful garden that's now overrun with weeds and brambles, 
which needs to be overcome for the garden to be restored to how it should be. And Jesus came to restore us to how we should be, to overcome all the things which weren't originally part of how we were created to be, such as our selfishness, our unkindness, our greed, which adversely affect our relationships with one another and with God. Jesus has overcome these things by dying in our place and paying the penalty for our sins. And by having faith in him, we too have overcome them and are being built into a new community where, there's, where love and trust are possible. Then there are other references to water, blood, the spirit and testimony. Well, what does all that mean? Well, in a court of law in Old Testament times, for something to be accepted as true, for example, someone accused of committing a crime, there had to be the testimony of two or three witnesses. So here, John gives three witnesses about Jesus being the Son of God and the promised Saviour. The first witness is water. This seems to be a reference to Jesus being baptised at the beginning of his ministry. And then we have the second witness, blood, which refers to his death on the cross. And the third witness is the Spirit, who John in his Gospel called the Spirit of Truth and who lives in believers. So what are these three witnesses testifying about? And the answer to that can be found in verses 11 and 12. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. So John wants us to be sure that we have eternal life if we believe in the Jesus as the Son of God. And John finishes his letter with an encouragement for us to pray, knowing that God hears us, and a warning to stay away from sin and to pray for others who are in danger of choosing a wrong path. And finally, he finishes with a warning to stay away from idols. And I came across a definition of idols recently, which challenges, challenged me, so I thought I would read it to you. An idol is whatever you look at and say in your heart of hearts, if I have that, then I'll feel my life has meaning, then I'll know I have value, then I'll feel significant and secure. That struck a chord with me. So as we finish John's first letter, let's make sure that we are staying away from idols, whatever they might be, and that our faith is our faith for life is firmly rooted in Jesus and that we show our love for God by loving his children and show our love for God's children by keeping God's commands. Let's pray. Lord, please show us today which of your children you're calling us to show your love to. And if our faith has become small, please remind us of how trustworthy your promises are and that you promise eternal life to everyone who believes in you. Amen.